Thomas Jefferson, founding father, passionate Republican, religious rationalist, and the political figure most credited with the American understanding of the metaphor, wall of separation. Though it had been used by others before him, James Berg in England, Roger Williams in Rhode Island, it was Jefferson's brief letter to a small Baptist community in Connecticut that would eventually elevate the phrase to a sacred status in American political discourse. At the time, most New England states had established official state churches. The Constitution had forbidden federal government from establishing religion, but not state government. So minority or dissenting churches feared their religious liberty was at the mercy of the state majority, like the Danbury Baptists of Connecticut. So in late 1801, the Danbury Baptist Association wrote President Jefferson what I would call a fan letter, a letter in which they congratulated him on his election to what they called the Chief Magistrate of the United States, in other words, the Presidency of the United States. They also celebrated Jefferson's lifelong devotion to the cause of religious liberty. And again, they saw in Jefferson the hope of a wave of religious liberty that would sweep across the country and would improve their own lives as a religious minority in New England. But there was more going on behind the scenes at the White House than even the Baptists realized. Previous presidents George Washington and John Adams had both proclaimed national days of fasting and thanksgiving while in office. Jefferson thought this was an entanglement of religion with the federal government. He had been wanting to distance himself from his predecessors, and this was his opportunity. So the sage from Monticello carefully crafted his response. His language to the Danbury Baptists was calculated rhetoric. Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. Thomas Jefferson. Now, I think it's also important to remember that this was an age before presidential news conferences. We didn't see the president on the evening television news. And so writing letters to constituents was a key way of an American president communicating to the American people. In fact, it was so important to Jefferson that he likened presidential proclamations to the actions of King George III of England, American public enemy number one. When he showed this passage to, uh, to his, his advisors from New England, they advised him to uh, delete them because uh, the New England Republicans would be offended because they themselves uh, were long, had long accustomed to the issuing of proclamations of thanksgiving and fasting and humiliation. And Jefferson uh, risked uh, by, uh, by sort of implying that this practice was a sort of Tory uh, British uh, monocratic practice, uh, Jefferson would uh, offend his own supporters in New England, so he deleted these words. But what I think becomes most interesting here is that Jefferson was governor of Virginia in 1779. He had issued Thanksgiving Day proclamations, days for prayer and fasting in favor of Almighty God. So the question arises, how does one reconcile Jefferson as state governor issuing religious proclamations with Jefferson as president refusing religious proclamations? I think the answer is to be found in Jefferson's wall of separation. It was a wall that buttressed this principle of federalism that said that there are some powers delegated to the national government, some powers left to state and local officials. And when it comes to matters pertaining to religion, what Jefferson is telling us here in the letter to the Danbury Baptists is, this is a matter, things like Thanksgiving Day proclamations, these are matters best left to state and local officials. I think that's what Jefferson meant by his wall of separation. Certainly no power to prescribe any religious exercise or to assume authority in any religious discipline had been delegated to the general government. It must then rest with the states. Thomas Jefferson. 
So Jefferson's Federalist separation of religious institutions from government did not, it seems, include a separation of religious influence from government. Though he was less than orthodox in his faith, he nevertheless considered God as the necessary foundation of society's laws and government. His authoring of the Declaration of Independence is his most well-known text. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, the Declaration of Independence. We have these rights from our Creator, and they're not given to us by government. And that means that the purpose of government is to protect those God-given rights. He even, Jefferson even proposed to have seminaries on the grounds of the University of Virginia. That shows how little he thought of this notion of separation of church and state. And at one point when he was working on designing the Great Seal of the United States, he suggested that you have uh, uh, Moses leading the Israelites through the Red Sea. As President of the United States, Jefferson frequently invoked God in official addresses and public papers. As president, he supported the use of the Bible in Washington, D.C. schools. He wrote and signed the Northwest Ordinance, encouraging religion in federal government and education. He promoted Christianity to Native American tribes through the arm of the federal government. He even funded chaplains in Congress and earnestly recommended church services to the military. He presided over the largest church service in his administration, held in the Capitol building. So the, the line was not whether we were going to have support of religion at all, is whether we were going to compel you to attend church services of a faith different than your own. Uh, and it's that separation of church, sectarian church, the sectarian faith, one church over another that Jefferson's talking about. And most certainly, even for Jefferson, was not a complete removal of all things religious from, from public discussion in the public square.